one of the most important things you can do when dealing with customer devices is you collect the serial number. Uh, it is not good enough, even if it's one customer with, who has one computer, one device, you always collect that serial number. Uh, because this serial number is one of the most important tools that you have to protect yourself when the customer decides to play stupid games. So, first off, I don't know that every customer does this on purpose, but I can absolutely tell you that my experience is that most people don't even know what it is they own. Um, when I was working in a cell phone repair shop, it was really common for people to be like, yeah, I get an iPhone. I think it's a 7S Plus. And it wasn't that because that model doesn't exist. I think they were saying 7 because it sounded better than saying 6, because 6 was an older model than the 7. And, I don't know, maybe people don't like the idea that they own something that old. But, I don't know, I got a iPhone 6S that's sitting on a table right now charging because I use it for things. But at any rate, um, yeah, so you want to collect a serial number because one of the things that will protect you uh, is recording this number because there are a lot of things you can do with that. First off, in the case of any sort of legal issue that involve police or lawsuits, it's really important to have it documented specifically which machine you worked on. Um, if you have a customer that doesn't know what they are, or they're trying to pull a fast one, they might come in with one, they might, so here's a scenario. Husband and wife, they both have iPhone XRs. Great. You bring in the, you, they bring it in for a battery replacement. And so they, you fix one of them. And then about a week later, they come back, oh, it's still not holding a charge. And what's actually happening is, unless that battery is actually defective, then they've brought in the other device. They brought in their spouse's device that doesn't have the problem. So you definitely want to make sure that you are logging everything you can about that particular device. Um, why is, you know, what phone number is attached to it? Uh, what's the serial number? Everything, because there are going to be signs that will point towards them playing a stupid game like that. Um, if they give you a different number to call because they're having, you know, they're like, oh yeah, well that, that's, that's the phone that you're working on. They might be that blatantly obvious. And if, you're, if your tech or you is not very smart, you're not going to think anything of it. Or they'll go as far as saying, oh, that, that's somebody else's phone, that's my neighbor's phone, or that's my mother-in-law's phone, something like that. Just anything to not have you call the number that is realistically the one you worked on. So if you work on a device and you are logging all of this, you can check service records to figure out which device is really which. And this is a lot of work. Like, you can log phone numbers, you can do all sorts of stuff, but the most direct and easy way to log this is very specifically the serial number of your device, or of the customer's device. Uh, in the case of a cell phone, uh, the IME. The IMEI is usually a better stand-in because another thing that this will help protect you from is if the customer decides to do a chargeback. And so when a customer does a chargeback and it was a legitimate repair, you need to go to a site like GSM Unlock Tools or SickW to use what's, what's known as the Punisher service, which will blacklist that phone. And I don't normally, you know, suggest people to do something like that unless there's a very good reason. And as long as if you get your car fixed somewhere and you don't pay the mechanic but he's nice enough to let you uh, have your car back for a few days so you can, I don't know, work and get your paycheck to pay him, then legally he can in take action involving the police, involving lawyers for service theft because as far as he's concerned there's something called a mechanics lien that can be filed to allow him to 
uh, take possession of that vehicle until you pay them. And so because this legal precedent is set in that type of repair, this also can be applied to this type of repair, although there isn't really going to be a, uh, it, it's a little harder, I guess, with, with electronic devices, but either way, legally, you are not doing anything wrong by blacklisting that device. And so that, you can't do that if you don't record the serial number. And then even without cell phones, if you're just working on computers, especially if you're working on uh, with, with a customer that has multiple computers, you don't need that stress because they're not going to say, oh, it was so-and-so's computer, because guess what? There might be five people in the office, and maybe that person switches out with somebody else, and they don't tell you. They're like, oh, yeah, so-and-so, we fixed it last week, but now we're having this problem again. And so you verify the serial number is the correct serial number, the original one that you worked on. And because so people are don't like to spend money on fixing things, uh, for whatever reason, it's just human psychology. We like to buy things. We like to buy new things. We like to not spend money on fixing broken things because that's money that we would have otherwise used to spend money on new things. And either way, so people will play this game and use that against you because they're not banking that you're going to be able to identify the device that they used and so you need to make sure that you don't give them that leg up. You protect yourself, you log that serial number. And until next time.